Welcome to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services module, learning how to use the CAPS Hospice Survey website. This module will introduce learners to the external CAPS Hospice Survey website. This is the third of five modules in the Navigating the HQRP Websites series. Learners may choose to listen to the entire series or may choose to listen to one or two modules that are of most interest to them. Meaning, the modules in this series can be watched independently or as a group. Included on slide 2 is a list of acronyms used in this module. Acronyms appear in alphabetical order. The external CAPS Hospice Survey website is one of the three websites available to hospice providers to help them stay up to date on HQRP requirements. This module will focus exclusively on the external CAPS Hospice Survey website. Specific learning objectives are listed on slide 3. Slide 4 provides a direct link to the CAPS Hospice Survey website. Before we go any further, it's important to note that this module's focus is on the external CAPS Hospice Survey website. This website is different from the CAPS tab on the CMS HQRP website that was discussed in Module 2 of this series. The external CAPS Hospice Survey website is devoted exclusively to the CAPS Hospice Survey. No HIS or other information is found on this website. The CAPS Hospice Survey website contains detailed information about hospice CAPS. This website is mainly for survey vendors, but also contains pertinent CAPS-specific information for providers. Such information includes CAPS-related news and updates, important documents and forms, such as the CAPS Hospice Survey itself, and the Participation Exemption for SIDES Request form. It also includes informational podcasts on CAPS, including podcasts on CAPS requirements, how to find or change survey vendors, CAPS data submission, and more. The website also provides an FAQ section, as well as contact information for the CAPS help desks. For this module, we'll focus on the sections of the CAPS Hospice Survey website that are pertinent to providers. This means we won't focus on the content that pertains to vendors only. The CAPS Hospice Survey website contains many different pages, which I'll refer to as tabs. The various tabs that comprise the CAPS Hospice Survey website appear in the dark blue boxes in the left-hand sidebar of the web page. The first tab we'll talk about is the home page. It contains links to the current news on CAPS, a brief about the survey section, and links to other helpful resources, such as CAPS fact sheets and the hospice final rule. Next, we have the What's New tab. This is where the current news links on the home page leads to. The What's New tab expands upon the current news posts and provides further details and guidance on CAPS-related updates. The Frequently Asked Questions, or FAQs tab, is next. The FAQs tab provides answers to frequently asked questions by hospice providers and vendors. Specific examples of covered questions include who must participate in the CAPS Hospice Survey, how is CAPS Hospice Survey compliance determined, and how does a hospice find a CMS-approved CAPS Hospice Survey vendor. Next, we have the Information for Hospices page. On this page, we have three important subtabs, as you can see at the top of this screenshot. The three subtabs are General Information, Podcasts for Hospices, and Hospice Specific FAQs. Let's go over each of these three subtabs now. The first subtab is General Information. 
This subtab contains information about the required forms providers must submit to participate in CAPS. We'll go over each of these important forms now. As you can see in the red box, there is the CAPS Hospice Survey Vendor Authorization Form. Hospices must submit this form to authorize their vendors. Otherwise, the vendor will not be able to submit data to the CAPS Hospice Survey Data Warehouse. This would prevent the hospice from meeting the CAPS requirements for the HQRP. There is also the CAPS Hospice Survey Data Warehouse form. Hospices must submit this form to obtain access to the data warehouse. The data warehouse is where hospices run reports to check their vendor's data submission status. Make sure to review the information and instructions for each form carefully to ensure successful submission of these forms. The next subtab under Information for Hospices is the Podcasts for Hospices subtab, which contains detailed podcasts on many key CAPS topics. For each podcast, both a module and a transcript are available. We'll take a second here to show you the list of the podcasts and the key CAPS topics they explore. They are listed on slide 13. These podcasts are a wealth of information. It's advised that whether you are a new or existing hospice, that you review these podcasts to be familiar with these topics and ensure you are submitting data correctly and on a timely basis to meet the HQRP requirements overall. The final subtab on the Information for Hospices page is the Hospice Specific FAQs tab. This tab simply directs back to the FAQ page that we reviewed on slide 8. Next, we have the Participation Exemption for Size tab. This page contains information on the size exemption eligibility criteria, application process, and deadlines. It also includes the size exemption form that you must submit to be considered for a size exemption. The Participation Exemption for Size form can only be completed and submitted online on this website. If you are eligible, you must submit this form every year, so you may wish to bookmark this tab so you can return to it annually to complete your size exemption form. Next is the Approved Vendor List tab, which provides a list of CMS-approved survey vendors. This page is important because the CAPS Hospice Survey requires you to hire an approved vendor to administer the survey. Thus, this page is where you will come to find a list of approved survey vendors. Next, we have the Survey Instruments tab. On this page, the complete CAPS Hospice Survey is available for download, including the CAPS mail survey materials in multiple languages and the telephone survey scripts in two languages, English and Spanish. Although your survey vendor will administer the survey, it is important that you become familiar with the survey to understand the questions that bereaved caregivers and family members are asked and to understand how quality at your facility is assessed. The last tab that we'll cover is the Training Materials page. This page provides materials from previous CAP-specific trainings for both providers and vendors. Providers who want to refer back to a training or who missed a live training event can find all training resources from that event here. After reviewing the CAPS Hospice Survey website, if you still need assistance, there are two CAPS help desks that you can reach out to. For any technical assistance, such as how to select or change vendors, or how to register your hospice to participate in the CAPS survey, you can contact the CAPS Hospice Survey Project team at the email or telephone number provided. For questions directed towards the CMS CAPS Hospice Survey staff, such as when hospice's CAPS data will be displayed on Hospice Compare, 
contact CMS staff at the email address provided. This concludes the module, Learning How to Use the CAPS Hospice Survey website. After reviewing this module, you should have a better understanding of the type of information housed on the CAPS Hospice Survey website, as well as how to navigate the website to find updates, informational podcasts, and important forms. This is the third of five modules in the series, Navigating the HQRP Websites. The other modules in this training series are listed here, and we encourage you to view these training modules for additional information on the topics listed on this slide. Thank you for viewing this presentation. The information presented was correct as of the date it was recorded. This presentation is not a legal document. Official Medicare program legal guidance is contained in the relevant statutes, regulations, and rulings.